Welcome back, Pokemon trainers. Professor Chaz here, the lab coat's on back order, and as you just saw, there's a bit of a grinding session there, because here in episode 42? I've lost track. Anyway, you guys know what episode number this is. Here in this particular episode, I want to show off the top of Mount Battle here in Pokemon Coliseum, because we haven't gone all the way up here just yet. So I did have to get the Pokemon train up a little bit. I'll show you the team in just a second here, but as we just defeated trainer number 98, Loman says, now go on, there are only two zones left. Throw your all into it. Because I did do some training, as I said, to get Pokemon up to the proper level to take on these challenges. So, I'm focusing on the legendary beasts of Johto. I will fully admit, last night during the first section of grinding there, I was kind of sleepy, kind of tired, starting to pass out a little bit here and there. We took a number of injuries, a number of knockouts during the battles, but since this is post-game, and since I don't want to waste your guys' time... Why did I move you, Entei? Wasting your guys' time with more grinding than we really need to go through, we're going to ignore the injuries for the rest of this playthrough, because this is just post-game follow-up, final kind of stuff here, right? So, Entei, level 64, is currently sitting here at the... or with the Jolly Nature. Found on Mount Battle, kind of interesting. Pressure is the ability, Flamethrower, Bite, Stomp, and Sunny Day. At level 61, they each try to learn something new, and some of them, I think two, uh, these two actually picked that up, whatever new move that was. We have a level 64 Raikou up next, Quirky Nature Pokemon. Pressure is the ability, and Spark, Thunder, Crunch is a new move, and Reflect on the move set. Next we have our level 63 Suicune, which means I'm going to put you into the front spot to get a level up there, buddy. Naughty Natured Pokemon. Pressure, of course, is the ability like the other two. Surf, Aurora Beam, and Rain Dance were the moves. Mirror Coat has replaced Mist, because that could come in handy. Going to hit me with a Thunder? I'm going to bounce that back double, assuming we survive it. Anyway, also on the team, not really being used right now, we have Stacy the Aria Dose at level 56, Tails and Ninetales level 57, and Pinky the Slowbro at level 59. Not going to go over their stats or anything, because we're not going to probably see them in battle. But whenever I say that in Pokemon TCG, that we're not going to use a certain Pokemon's attack, we tend to use that certain Pokemon's attack. So let's let Suicune and Raikou lead the way here. Entei is our longest running beast here in the team, so we're going to let you take a little rest there, buddy. Let's advance to, uh, I was going to say, episode. Zone 99. Oh, my, my, my. You've won your way through the ranks to be here. You're more excellent than my pupils. Thank you. Now show me an excellent battle. I will do my best. So we just fought two trainers ago. Somebody that had the fully evolved starters from Johto. Last trainer had the fully evolved starters from Hoenn. This trainer has no starters. Okay, then. So we have a Magneton and a Crawdont. Well, the Crawdont we could easily spark. Pretty sure your special defense is not too crazy amazing. As for the Magneton, I'm just going to fire off Surf. Actually, let's try that Mirror Coat. See if that actually plays out the way I'm hoping it will. So, I mentioned, I think in the last episode, I ain't the best guy when it comes to time management. As such, there was no news update yesterday. As such, there's no news update today. But, I've got plenty of time available tomorrow. I'm going to spend... We can crunch you. I was going to say, how do we touch that thing? Zap Cannon. Okay, wait, I gotta see if I survive this. Why would you not target down the water type that would be weak to that move? Come on. Well, can't count on that then. Let's just go for a Surf Attack. Hit the Magneton. We're gonna try a Crunch Attack on the Shedinja. See if we can knock it out. We're gonna be slower because we're paralyzed thanks to Zap Cannon. Anyway, we've got plenty of time to get stuff researched, recorded, edited, uploaded for tomorrow. And if I can't make that upload, then, good gosh, I'm just terrible at this YouTube stuff. We'll see what happens. Now, I will mention a bit, since there's really not much to mention here. Come on. I'll mention a little bit about what's going on with my Pokemon Go. Hang on. I should probably heal the paralysis, but we're going to take a chance here. Let's see what this thing can do. It used Swords Dance, so I'm kind of scared of this thing. But I have recently added a couple new Pokemon to the main team. Actually, a few new ones in my Pokemon Go game there. We have... Lock on. We've got Snapper the Totodile. I finally hashed my fifth one. And as I play through Pokemon Go, I wait till I find the fifth one that I want. Or I find five of a species and then choose which one I want to have as the main Pokemon. Ow! Can you get crunched, please? Thank you! So I got my fifth Totodile. I also captured my fifth Raid Croconaw, which has now become my Feraligator, Dundee. And I've also just recently added a Doduo to the team as well, because I mentioned there was a Doduo nest in my city. I did finally manage to capture my fifth one, my fifth male one, actually, I should say, and chose which one's going to represent Heads, the Dodrio from our main series. Now, the only problem, if you want to call it a problem, 
is that uh, one of my goals in Pokemon Go is to try to get 100 candies for each species. That way when it comes time to power each Pokemon up, I've got plenty of candy to rely on. As I go through those candies, I can walk that Pokemon to get back up to 100 candies, right? So, because I was finding a lot of times when I was doing a lot of powering up of all my Pokemon, I would run out of candy for this species, that species, and have to start walking them while powering someone else up. Maybe losing track of which one, you know, I'm training up and stuff like that, or you know, boosting up with the uh, power-ups and stuff. So, all that being said, I started a goal of trying to hold on to 100 candies of each species as the default. So, I've been doing pretty good. Some Pokemon that you don't see often a lot, like for example, Stantler and Girafferig, I've been walking them a little bit, but as it turns out, I'll surf again, and let's go for a eh, bite is super effective on Gardevoir, but our jolly nature makes Stomp more powerful, I think, based on the defensive stats. But anyway, so, where was I going with that? Yeah, like, I hatched Stantler, I hatched a Giraffe Rig, I got some pretty good, you know, candy for each of them from those hatches, so everyone was almost up to 100. Like, not quite. Some Pokemon were only at a little bit of about 50 candies, which is okay, but as I was getting these Pokemon ready... I then add a Totodile and Feraligator. We have almost no candy left for those species. Ow, that hurts. And by adding Doduo, we also have low candy for that species as well. So I've got a lot of candy to build up again. But it's a good thing. It's encouraging me to be out walking around, right? That's the whole point of Pokemon Go. And how much does Surf Attack do to both of these Pokemon? Now, again, another thing too. I only need one more Mareep to choose a main one for the team. I just need one more Wobbuffet. Uh, is there any other species I'm almost choose or ready to choose five of, or one of five? I don't think so. I might be forgetting someone, but anyway, as I catch more and more Pokemon, I've got to add more to the team. Good, we're still faster than Gardevoir. Sweet, Rock Tomb does nothing. But it's going to be so, so fun walking around playing Pokemon Go. And I will mention a little bit... I should probably have saved this for a Pokemon Go video, but we haven't had one in a while. And there might not be one for a while yet until the next big event happens in game. So I can talk a little bit about that here just to fill up space. Excellent! Although, I just realized I want to hold off and give the final battle of Mount Battle its due time to shine. Okay, finally, there's just one zone left. Hang tough! Alright, who is in need of level? We're going to let Raikou sit back, because you hit level 65, my friend. Suicune and Raikou... Suicune and Entei are going to lead the way. So, this is the top of Mount Battle. Very, look at this, on top of the mountain, we're above the sky, above the sky, above the clouds. Look how dangerous this looks, though. I don't think I would want to battle on here, especially if Pokemon attacks could, like, jostle the stage and stuff like that. But, apparently it's safe enough. They have people do this all the time. Now, I will say... What I like about this, if you go from Trainer 1 to Trainer 100 all in one go, and by that I mean you can save in between and take a break, but like as long as you don't leave Mount Battle and keep going from 1 to 100, every Pokemon in your team gets a special ribbon. I believe it's called the Earth Ribbon. And I think the text says for celebrating a 100 win streak. And that's what this is talking about. It's a ribbon that you can no longer get. You can only get it from this game and Gale of Darkness. And every Pokemon in my... Well, from Gen 3 in my Sun and Moon game, has this ribbon. I put in the time to get all the way up to uh, Trainer 100 with everyone in my team. It's a badge of honor, just to show how stubborn and how dedicated I can be, I guess. But anyway, it's the last man right here. Welcome! So good of you to come! I'm Somak, the final trainer of Mount Battle. Now, show me the results of your training. Don't hold anything back! Well, let's do this. It gets its own introduction and everything here, too. Now, Battle Coliseum Final. This was a Coliseum? Guess so. Alright, Salmac. Let's do this. Some music. Pinsir and Claydol. Not a bad way to start. Flamethrower the Pinsir, Surf Attack the Claydol. So, I do believe in. Gale of Darkness, the levels are a lot higher. I seem to think they're like up to level 70 in that game, but we'll find out eventually. Now, let's see how quickly we can take down Somex team using our legendary beasts. Now, I was going to mention the last episode, but I got sidetracked and lost track or lost train of thought. Um, something I really liked about the fact that, you know, Shadow Bayleaf is in the game, Shadow Croconaw, and Shadow Quilava is here somewhere. 
what I liked was when Gen 3 came out, since it couldn't connect to Generations 1 and 2, the original Game Boy games, I felt like it was almost like a forced restart where you had to use the Pokemon that the game designers decided to give you access to. If you know what I mean by that. I'm trying to say like, uh, ooh, Earthquake. That might hurt us a little bit. Um, you know, Bulbasaur, Charmander, Squirtle, they were nowhere to be seen in Ruby and Sapphire. You know, there's no way to get them as far as I knew. There was no Pokemon Stadium game where you could get them as giveaways for winning certain achievements in the game. I'm going to try Surf again, and we're going to go with a Flamethrower to Crobat. Now, that should be the faster on the field. Yeah. I was afraid of that. Hit Suicune. No, Ante's going to fall to an Earthquake unless the Surf takes it out. But, uh... It felt like a forced restart thing. So you didn't have any starters from Gen 1 and 2 in Ruby or Sapphire. Or could you get them in Emerald? I don't know. I never played Emerald. So they might have had other Pokemon in that that I'm not aware of. But regardless, the starters always seem to be this kind of forgotten memory that no longer existed in the world of Pokemon as far as Gen 3 was concerned. But with this game, you could get those shadow starters from Johto and purify them, send them down, and start breeding. Chikorita, you have Breed Totodal, Breed Cyndaquil, and I really loved the way that they brought this in. I was hoping that you could find Squirtle, Bulbasaur, Charmander eventually, but apparently that's not the case here. I can't remember if they're, I don't think they're in Gale of Darkness either, but we'll find out at some point. Alright, so, a couple of ground types. I think the best thing here, I'm going to Aurora Beam the Flygon as we go for a potion, a hyper potion for a poor Ente. Got two ground types on the opposing side. Earthquakes are going to hurt, and I think this guy loves his earthquakes. How much can we do to the Flygon? Probably not a knockout. Never mind, I don't know my typing, defensiveness, or anything like that. Flygon is fly done. Next is the final Pokemon. It's gonna be with the fire? Not even close. We could use Raikou for that though. They're gonna intimidate us, that is fine. It's not really fine, I was gonna stomp. And there's the Earthquake, so of course, look, so he has a team, other than, what was that first one, Pinsir. He has a team that is immune to ground attacks, and they can all get Earthquake. Except for the Pinsir, it is resistant to ground, so that's not the worst thing ever, I guess. So we're going to Aurora Beam Gligar. Let's get the burn on Flamethrower. We're going to cut our attacks out, we're going to cut your attacks out with a burn. I'm calling it right now. Wait for it. It's not very effective, but you got no. Alright, I was hoping for a burn. Not quite. Put down goes Gligar. No way you're taking that. If our Lammy can't survive Ice Beam from a Porygon 2, you're not taking no Aurora Beam from the legendary Suicune. This will hurt. Didn't fall though. Nice. Okay, so what we're going to do is switch Suicune out for Raikou. Because they're going to probably target down Entei once again with another Hydro Pump, which calls for a Hyper Potion. Almost fully healed back up. This gives Raikou a free switch in. Now, let's see, did the computer predict this and go for an Earthquake? Oh, Dragon Dance. So, first of all, I love the way Dragon Dance looks in this. It uses the same animation for Splash, as much sense as that makes. But, how do you like that? They somehow happened to know that we were going to be doing some switching around and went for a Dragon Dance instead of attacking, into, which they should have done. Never mind, Gyarados falls regardless. Get out of my way. Give me the Poke Coupons. No levels, that's alright. I don't care, I want the coupons. Somek is defeated. Stupendous! Thank you! Now, had I gone from 1 to 100 all in one go, they would now earn ribbons too. This is fantastic! I say fantastic! You had to be to, 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 to defeat me! That's right. Now, I'd like you to have this. 1,200 Poké Coupons. Congratulations, but don't be content with this. Don't neglect your training. Would you like to have our Abra teleport you back to the registration counter? Sure. I mean, that's a quick down instead of walking all the way through the stairs. Abra appears out of nowhere. Kind of freaky. And away we go. I'm talking with my hands a lot for some reason today. I don't know why. Okay, so... Let me just check how much coupons we have. What can we buy? Because I do want to, as I say... Get a bunch of these TMs, Ice Beam, Flamethrower, Thunderbolt, those are my main targets. Psychic would be good too, but again, these bears are the main reason I came here to the Ore region to begin with. The bears are going to help us with contests in Gen 3 in the Game Boy Advance games. 
I got a lot of grinding to do to get those coins, but we'll get to that at some point. Anyway, before I started off the grinding session, those of you with very sharp eyes might have noticed that I checked my email because I did get a new email as soon as I came here. That email says, Trouble in Under from Sec in Pyrite Town. Hi, big guy. We've been hearing about Shadow Pokemon from people visiting the Under from Pyrite. A lot of the visitors have seen the Shadow Pokemon. Net in the Under should have some more information for you. So we know where we're heading. There's still more post-game adventure to go through. Let's head on there and see what Shadow Pokemon they're talking about. I have a hunch it might be Quilava. Now, I also need to find myself the D-Disc to find our way down to the deep section of this game. There is... It's kind of weird. So, Pyrite Town is on the surface, right? The Under is already, like, a certain amount of miles below? I don't know if it'd be full miles, but it's a certain distance down below. It wouldn't be miles. We're taking an elevator. Do elevators go down for miles? I don't think so. Maybe they could. Who knows? We're talking Stargate SG-1. That's a pretty deep mountain. But, uh... There's an even deeper part. Which is crazy. How far down can we go? Like, when do we get to the Earth's core, basically? When do I get the L-Disc? I don't have that yet, do I? What do I have for discs? I don't even know. Let's just check the old items and refresh myself on this. Forward, right, on, or up. No, we don't get the uh, left disc yet. When do we get that? That might be the other time flu now that I think about it, though. Out of the way, you. Alright, let's go talk to whoever it was. Hi, Chaz. Did you meet up with that Silva guy? He was saying something about going to check out Real Game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We already met him. Get, a, get out of the under sometimes, you know? See the world above you. That's where the Real Game Tower is at. So, I believe it might be you. That's Nets PC. I talked to the wrong thing. Oh, hi, Chaz. I think there's a sneaky trainer here in the under lately. There's a guy in front of the junk shop named Gurks. He apparently saw the shadow Pokemon in a battle. The quickest way to find out is to ask Gurks himself. You check it out. Why do you never tell me in the, what's that, the email who to talk to first? Save me a little bit of time. Why can I not move? There we go. Rui, I'll blame that one on you. For some reason, I don't know why, because I don't take blame for stuff. That's probably why. All right, Gurks. You're on the top, aren't you? You're Gurks. I know you. All right, let's walk all the way through this hotel section in the upper floor. And is there anything on TV? No. No, it's... Why did I take the longest path? Okay, fine. Let's... The under makes no sense. It's too complicated, too confusing. Gurks, what's going on? Huh? What's that? You want to know about a shadow Pokemon that I battled? How about we battle first? If you win, I'll happily tell you about that shadow Pokemon's trainer. No, he said happily. He's going to have the biggest smile of joy on his face. I almost said joy of smile. Never mind that. The biggest smile of joy. You're going to send in a couple of super-sized Pokemon, which, as I said before, I can't wait to see when you choose to walk them in Pokemon Go. Have they even planned how they're going to do that just yet? Now, I realize there's something else I can talk about for Pokemon Go, because something just jogged my memory. Why don't I have Raikou out here? Well, we can surf and stomp, I suppose. But uh, I have heard, with the latest update for Pokemon Go, that there are people that just like crack into the data code and stuff like that and find all the secret information and all that. One of the things to note is that the starting Pokemon from Kanto are no longer available from eggs, which... Sounds like it's kind of sad, right? They're, you're not going to have any Bulbasaur hatches, you're not going to have any Squirtle hatches anymore. No more getting boosted candy from those species by hatching the eggs. But what I think is kind of uh, maybe leading into something that they're planning for the future... One sec. This might hurt. Yeah, I thought it might have hurt. Alright, let's get Raikou in here. Let's go with... Let's just try Mirror Coat as we switch Entei out for Raikou. So, I have a hunch, I have a suspicion that breeding might be coming soon. Now, the reason I think this is because if they take the starting Pokemon from Kanto out of the eggs, then you don't get those boosted candies from hatching them, right? If they have provided, or if they're going to provide ways to breed Pokemon, you can breed your own starters to get those candies, right? So, it might not permanently be gone as far as getting candies for hatching these Pokemon go. Again, that is just a random thought that might be something that's happening. I really don't know for sure, of course. Oh, wait! Mirror Code actually does get the fire off. They hit us with Water Spout. No damage. Whatever. Biggest threat would probably be this Whale Lord, but it did just use Amnesia, so we're going to first get the Rain Dance up as we spark the other one. But, uh, yeah, so I'm thinking breeding might be coming at some point. I don't know what they have planned for it, what they would be doing with it, but... 
to be able to get your candies from breeding Pokemon. Like, however they do the breeding. If you need to power up Charizard, for example, encouraging you to breed Charmander eggs would be a good way to, well, encourage you to get the candy for it, right? So, that's why I think breeding might be coming in. Now, another thing that they found is that there are a lot of... Uh, why would you swagger me? Come on, I want a Thunder. I could just full heal that. I guess that's the best thing. <sighs> but, uh... They've also found that there are some codes or some files in the game in Pokemon Go that talk about the candy for Gen, uh, Gen I almost said Gen 6, for Gen 3. Candy that uh, re or refers to those Pokemon. Now, I'm thinking if that is the tr uh, truth, if the candies are in the game, just not available yet, of course, they might be preparing to release Gen 3 pretty soon. And something that makes me think that, I've been finding a lot of evolution items for Gen 2 Pokemon in random spins from Pokestops the past couple weeks or so. I went one day, I got two Dragon Scales and one Metal Coat from random stops. It wasn't even my seventh day. So, I think they might be giving us these items at a boosted amount to encourage us to finish our Gen 2 Pokedexes because Gen 3 is right around the corner. Who knows? They might be doing it as... Well, it was not even a full year after the game came out that Gen 2 came out, so... And Gen 2 came out... Winter time, well, yeah, because my first swine up I caught in the snow in my video, so anytime now, Gen 3 could happen. Those are all just my random thoughts as far as Pokemon Go is concerned. Alright, I promised that I'd tell you about that Shadow Pokemon. You promised you'd happily do it. The trainer was this guy named Rosso in a flashy red outfit. He had a Shadow Quilava with him. Is that all you have to say? So let's head on out of here and wait for the next email, because you know we're going to get one. Whenabouts will that email come to us? I'm going to leave the under, and we'll just head off to, I guess, home base would be... Mount Battle's a good home base, I guess. Let's go ahead and fire up the old F-Disc and go forward. There you are, buddy. Our most used disc thus far. The U-Disc is not used ever again, because there's nothing else up top there. We have ourselves the Time Flute from the Windmill. Who would ever go back up again? You don't even really get a good sight. You just go right into the Windmill. You're completely blocked in by walls. Anyway, let us... I was going to heal here, but no, I want to leave the under and go to a different city, because I think that might prompt an email. So all he told us was there was a shadowy guy named Rosso with Quilava. Or rather, a guy named Rosso with a shadowy Quilava. Not much to go on. Unless should I talk to Nat again? I didn't think so. I knew an email was forthcoming. So, where has the Quilava been spotted? Shadow Pokemon Lab. Oh, Marcia of Pirate Town! I'm right here! It appears as if criminals are gathering at the Shadow Pokemon Lab again. There's more! People have seen a Cypher Peon in a gaudy red outfit with a Shadow Quilava. I wonder what's up? We're in the right spot here, folks, but we are at time for the episode. I'm just gonna go save it up, and let's go to the police station. Good old Chief Sherless, or Sherls, however you pronounce it. I don't know. Is this a police station? It is. So, that is the end of today's episode. There's still apparently a lot more in post-game to get through here in Pokemon Coliseum. And as I say, time-wise, I'm hoping to get things back on track with the other videos. It's just so hard when there's so many rare Pokemon and Pokemon Go out there that I can catch right now. But I'll try to prioritize time the proper way for the time. Hey, I see Gonzat back there. But we'll see how the rest of the videos go this week. I also got to find my 3DS because I want to start back into the Wi-Fi battles on the channel as well. Because I completely forgot. I think... As new competitions are coming up, like the online competitions, you can download the rule set for those and practice in those. I'd like to be able to do that. Anyway, all that being said, we are now done for Pokemon Coliseum for the day. I want to say thanks for watching, and of course, if you enjoy the episode, feel free to hit that like button down below. And if you missed any episodes of Coliseum along the way, check the link in the description to the full playlist. But for some more videos that I've done, there's some links during the outro, and you can also subscribe during the outro by clicking the link, which is my face, to your daily Pokemon content from Professor Chaz. But with that all being said, we are, again, done. Thanks again for watching. Professor Chaz is signing off, and I'll catch you next time.